In today's tutorial, I will show you how to connect a custom domain to your AWS S3 bucket. And this is what the final result will look like. You will be able to access your root domain. So in this example, it's electrifyingtech.com and be able to see what's hosted on your S3 bucket, as you can see here. And you can also go to your www.subdomain as well to be able to access the same exact website. So to start, we can just log into our AWS account. And once you're logged in, go to the Amazon S3 bucket section, like you see here. And once you're on this page, you should see a list of all of your Amazon S3 buckets. And now we will create two different buckets. One will be for our root domain and the other one will be for the www subdomain. So now I'll create the first bucket that will be representing the root domain by clicking create bucket. And once you're on this page, just type in your domain that you have. I'm just gonna do like a random domain. So I'll just do like my random domain here and just do a bunch of numbers and do .com because it has to be unique. And once you're done inputting that field, just go all the way down and uncheck this box that says block all public access and make sure you check this box saying you acknowledge and then hit create bucket. And once you successfully create your bucket, you should now see it under your buckets list. And here we can just go ahead and click on the bucket that we just made and start editing some properties. And once you're in this page, the first thing we actually wanna do is to go ahead and upload our website uh, to the S3 bucket by clicking the upload button here. And once you click on upload, you should now see this page and just click on the add folder or files button, however you want to upload it. I would just be uploading one file. So I will click on the add files button here and just upload this single index.html file and then click upload. And as you can see, the file has successfully been uploaded as you can see here. And once that process is done, just click on the close button here and you should now see all the files you've not uploaded. And for the next change that we want to make is clicking on this properties tab and then scrolling all the way down to see this very last option. It says static website hosting and hitting the edit button. And here just select the enable option and make sure the first option selected says host static website. And here just specify the home or default page of the website like it says. So I'll just be doing index.html because that's the only file I have. And I'll just click save changes. And now the last change that we have to make is adding some permissions. So we can just click on the permissions tab and just scroll down to see bucket policy and hit edit. And here I'm just going to paste in a bucket policy that I already have. And right where it says example bucket, just make sure to type in the name of your bucket, as you can see here. So mine would just be like my random here 988998.com. But here you just put your exact domain and then hit save. And now if you've done everything properly, if you go to the properties tab and scroll all the way down, you should now see like a randomly generated URL. And if you click on it, you will now see your website hosted at this AWS URL. And now we'll repeat a somewhat similar process with the subdomain bucket. So we can just go back to our S3 buckets and click on create bucket. And now for your bucket name, just type in the subdomain that you want. I'll just do www. in this example, followed by my uh, domain from earlier. And if we scroll down, just make sure to uncheck this box like we did in the previous step, as well as check this I acknowledge box. And scroll all the way down and click create bucket. And now go ahead and click on the bucket that we just created. And this time, all we need to do is go into the properties tab and scroll all the way down and click on the edit static website hosting option. And here, just click on the enable option and click on the redirect re request for an object. And for the host name, just type in the domain that you named your first bucket. So in this example, this is what I will input. And for the protocol, just click on HTTP and click save changes. And now what this will do is that anytime a user goes to your www subdomain, uh, it will redirect them back to your root domain. And so that's all the work we have to do related to the AWS S3 buckets. Now we would just need to go to a different AWS service named Route 53. And we can do that by going back to the AWS homepage and just searching for Route 53, as you can see here, and clicking on the service. And once you're on this page, we just need to create a new hosted zone. And we can do that by clicking hosted zone on the left hand side here. And then click the create hosted zone button. And for your domain name, just type in your root domain. So I'll just type in mine here. And scroll all the way down, just click on create hosted zone. And now as you can see, I've successfully created a new hosted zone. And now for the next step, just click on the create record button. And here, just click on the alias button and the choose endpoint option and here uh, choose the alias to s3 website endpoint 
And for the region, choose the region that you're currently in. And for this very last option, you should see uh, the S3 bucket endpoint that we created in the earlier step. So just click on that and just uncheck this option that says evaluate target health and just click create records. And now we just need to create one more record for our subdomain. So just click create record. And in the subdomain input box, just type in the subdomain that you want and then click on the alias option and just uh, choose the alias to S3 website endpoint again and just do the exact same uh, steps as we did before. And then hit create record. And now we've done all the work on the AWS side. For the very last step, we just need to change some DNS settings. So now you should go to your domain provider's website. I'll be going to Google Domains because that's where I bought my domain from. And on your domain provider's website, you should see a DNS uh, settings page. So make sure to just go to that. And once you're in a DNS settings page, you should see somewhere where it says like custom name servers, as you can see here. And now what we want to do is to replace the custom name servers with like AWS name servers. So if you go back to the hosted zone details, we can see there's like a type NS and here there are a couple of records. So these are the ones that you want to copy into your domain providers, like custom name servers, as you can see, I did here. And once you've done that, just go ahead and save. And once you hit save, it might take anywhere from a couple minutes to a couple hours before your changes take effect. But once they do, you should now be able to go to your root domain or your subdomain and see the contents of your S3 bucket. Just like you can see in my example here. And those are all the steps of how to connect a custom domain to your S3 bucket. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.